Ikaw ba ay namamroblema sa iyong health condition? Umiinom ng maintenance medications pero hindi pa rin gumagaling? Try this top 5 healthy practices ngayong taon and you will see na baka ito yung kulang sa inyong practices how to become really healthy. This is your diet doctor, Dr. Josephine Grace Rotan and have a happy weekend everyone. I hope you are doing well and today yun yung pag-uusapan natin. The top 5 best healthy practices ngayong taon. This is based on my personal experience as a doctor although I am a plastic surgeon by specialty also specializing in ENT and head and neck diseases but on the side I do nutrition and lifestyle modification. So ano yung top five practices na ito? These are quite simple. And yung iba, para sa mga matagal na followers, I'm sure alam nyo na to. But for those na ngayon pa lang sa ating channel, sa ating Facebook and YouTube channels, welcome po and I hope you can learn a thing or two sa ating pag-uusapan ngayon. Hello to all of our top fans and subscribers sa ating channel. Know that we are very, very grateful. Ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong support. So, number one, ano yung top five best healthy practice na pwede natin gawin is... Very simple lamang, eat real foods. Anong ibig sabihin ng pagkain ng real food? Ang binibili nating mga biskwit, yung mga chocolate bars, yung mga nasa pakete, mostly yung mga pagkain merong nakalabel na nutritional facts are actually not real food eto ay process na. So, when you choose real food, yun yung as much as possible galing talaga sa nature directly. And of course, when it comes to nature, number one na food para sa ating mga tao would actually be meat and seafoods. Yun talaga yung natural na pagkain natin bilang hunter-gatherers and of course, bilang mga mangingisda. So, Seafood and meat are your primary real food. At kung kukulangin, you can add vegetables in it. At buti na lang, staple na rin ngayon yung itlog. So, how about yung fruits and yung mga grains tulad ng kanin at, at saka tinapay? Real food din ba sila? Generally, real food din sila. Pero based on history, hindi talaga sana yung katawan natin na parating kumain ng fruits and mga grains o yung mga nakukuha natin from agricultural na mga pag-ani because agricultural revolution only happened 10,000 years ago. Paulit-ulit na lang natin yan. And yung katawan natin ay sanay sa hunter-gatherer state na nangyari for millions of years ago. So that's why hindi talaga sanay yung katawan natin na parating kumakain ng kanin, ng mais, ng mga flour or wheat products. Kasi nga, yung signal na binibigay nila sa ating katawan ay harvest season. So harvest season, ibig sabihin maraming fruits, maraming sugar, yun yung panahon na nagpapataba sa ating katawan. At yung pagtaba na yun, okay lang kung gagamitin natin sa pag-aayuno on the remaining times of the year na walang masyadong harvest, na hindi natural harvest or fruit bear, fruit season. So kapag nangyayari yan, kapag parati kayong kumakain ng kanin, parati kayong kumakain ng tinapay, ng biskwit, parati kayong kumakain ng fruits, fruit juices, hello sa mga nagtitinda sa ating mga fruit stand. Kamusta ang inyong mga chan? If you think your belly is getting bigger, then it might be that you are consuming more fructose, more fruits, more than what you need. At ang isang indication nun, dumalaki yung chan, tumataas yung level of visceral fats, and at the same time, tumataas din yung triglycerides. Kahit hindi kayo kumakain ng taba ng baboy, kahit hindi na kayo kumakain ng kahit anong fried or pinirito sa mantika, tumataas pa rin yung inyong triglycerides. And that is secondary to too much fructose and glucose intake. And that fructose and glucose intake, pwede siyang manggaling sa mga sugars, sa asukal na nilalagay natin sa ating pagkain at sa ating inumin. But pwede rin ito manggaling sa kanin. Pwede rin ito manggaling sa tinapay. And of course, sa fruits. So ano ang level ng sugar or glucose na nasa kanin? I think, alam niyo na yan, no? Per cup 
isang cup lang po ng kanin ay merong katumbas na 10 teaspoons of glucose or sugar. Meron nagtanong, hindi ako makapaniwala. Hindi totoo yan. Paano nangyayari yan? This is because yung ating asukal po o yung glucose natin, eto yung katumbas niya ay simple sugar para siyang coins. ba? So eto yung ating always na sinasabi. Para siyang change. So coins siya, so mabigat. Nakita natin isa-isa. So 100 peso coins, mabigat. Pero 100 peso bill, eto ay magaan at hindi mo mararamdaman. That is exactly the same with rice and sugar. Yung rice, kapag ito ay na-breakdown na sa ating katawan because it is a complex carbohydrates, it is starch, ito ay magiging glucose lang din. At yung equivalent na glucose niya, kapag ito ay parang nag-change na into coins, ito ay pareho pa rin na 100 units, same as the coins, but in glucose, Per cup of rice, nasa 45 grams of glucose at ang katumbas noon ay mga at least 10 teaspoons of white sugar. Kasama na dyan, hindi lang yung white rice, pwede, pwede rin red rice, brown rice, black rice. Very minimal lang yung kanilang difference. So, what to eat? Ano na lang kung ayong kakainin kung wala ng kanin, wala ng tinapay, wala ng uh, pasta, wala ng noodles, wala ng pansit? Ano na lang yung kakainin? Kumain kayo ng lechong manok. Kumain kayo ng inihaw na isda. Pwede kumain ng crabs, ng hipon, all other animal meat products you can consume. Pero yung kabiat niyan, dapat hindi ito kasama ang mga pagkain nagsisignal ng harvest season sa ating katawan. So again, all kinds of carbohydrates except, ha? meron naman exemption. If mahilig talaga sa carbohydrates at nauumay, hindi kayang kumain na parang puro ulam lamang, then you can have your vegetables. Choose vegetables that are low carb tulad ng pepino, sayote, and ano pa ba? Uh, sa root crops, meron namang available na low carb tulad ng singkamas. But of course, huwag kumonsumo ng more than kalahating kilo sa isang araw. But there are other practices that I can help you with as we go along with our Top 5 low-carb practices, best low-carb practices, also doctor recommended yours truly. Top 5 best healthy practices for this year and hopefully in the coming year. So number 1, eat real foods. Hindi na kailangan bumili ng mga fruit juices, hindi na kailangan bumili ng mga nakapakete, yung mga fresh produce, yung real food, yung kainin, and you can never go wrong at sa mga condiments naman, just basic salt and pepper ay sobrang sarap na. My best, uh, yung mga pinakapaborito kong menu or luto ng manok, ng baboy at ng karne, actually nilaga lang. Yung pinakuluan ng matagal na matagal hanggang sila ay lumambot at lumabas na yung kanilang real meat essence na yung kanilang sabaw ay nandun na lahat ng kanyang lasa. So, mga 2 to 3 hours ng pressure cook na chicken, pork, or beef at saka asin lamang ay sobrang sarap na. Wala ka nang hahanapin pa. So, Moving on tayo to our second best practice is do circadian fasting. So ano yung circadian fasting? So yung circadian fasting, yung pinaka-standard nito ay kumain lang kapag meron pang araw. So it has something to do with our circadian cycle sa ating katawan, circadian rhythm sa ating katawan, or the sleep and wake cycle sa ating katawan. Sobrang daming scientific evidence so providing the knowledge na kapag hindi tayo in tune with our circadian rhythm, kapag tayo ay gising sa panahong dapat tayo ay tulog, kapag tayo ay tulog sa panahon na dapat tayo ay gising, those can actually disrupt our metabolism. Hindi lang siya puyat, hindi lang siya pagkakaroon ng early aging, but it can also reflect as poor metabolism. Pwedeng tumaas yung blood sugar because of the stress response ng katawan. Pwedeng tumaas yung blood pressure dahil din sa inflammation na nangyayari sa katawan. So paano gawin yung circadian fasting? Eat when you are most active, kumain, kumonsumo ng tubig, ng inumen when you are most active and try to limit them kapag kayo ay papunta ng magpahinga. So ideally, during sunrise to sundown, dun lang kayo pwedeng kumain. So ideally then, 
hindi kailangan na pag nakita nyo na yung araw, ay kakain na kayo agad. Because research shows na merong benefit, merong health benefit kapag tayo ay nag-extend ng ating overnight fast. Pero sa mga nagsisimula pa lang, at least 12 hours lang of fasting ay okay na. May nagtatanong paano ba gawin yung fasting ng tama? So just very basic, yung gagawin lang yan, magbilang kayo, magsimula kayong magbilang sa oras pagkatapos nyong kumain sa gabi. Okay? So kung kayo ay kumakain ng say for example around 6 ng gabi, so but ngayon nagsisimula pa lang kayong kumain, huwag kayong, kayong magbilang sa 6 o'clock. So magbilang kayo pagkatapos kumain. So say for example, mga isang oras kayong kumain because you are a chewer, nginungoyan talaga ng maganda, ng matagal yung inyong kinakain. So 1 hour kayong kumain, pagka patak ng alas 7 ng gabi ay tapos na kayong kumain. So magsimula kayong magbilang ng alas 7 na. So 7 p.m., 7 ng gabi, hanggang 7 ng umaga, that's already 12 hours. So that's the base sick at pinaka simple kind of fasting. By 7 in the morning, pwede na kayong kumain. Kung 6 kayong kumain ng gabi, by 6 in the morning, if kayo ay early bird, early riser, pwede na rin kayong mag-breakfast at early, as early as 6 a.m. At pwede kayong kumain the whole day, especially sa mga nagsisimula pa lang, hindi nyo kailangan persahin ang inyong pag Fasting. And of course, para sa mga medyo pros na, you will actually notice that after 12, 2 weeks of doing low carb, especially yung sa simula ay kinain nyo yung real food low carb, wag muna mag-indulge ng mga goodies, okay? Uh, real food muna kasi yung goodies processed na din, okay? Even if low carb sila, hindi sila nakakapag-spike ng inyong blood sugar, but those are not real foods and they can probably baka maging hindi tama yung inyong appetite. Ano ang hindi tamang appetite? Yung iba, wala nang ganang kumain. Yung iba naman, ay yung ganan nila sa kain ay sobra-sobra. So, hindi na tama, hindi na perfect yung appetite niyo. So, that's why the only way to correct that is to eat real food. So, going back to circadian fasting, importante na you can also practice to be mindful sa inyong katawan. Kasi usually in our practice, about one to two weeks na nagsimula ng low carb, ay makikita ninyo na hindi na katulad noon yung inyong appetite. Noon, maya maya, every one to two hours ay gutom na. Every one to two hours ay kailangan na namang kumain. However, when you do low carb the right way, you will notice na one to two meals a day lamang ay tama na para sa inyo. So, hello po. Ano po ang inyong experiences, kindly share them in our uh, comments para makita din ng iba. So maraming salamat to our 693 live <clears throat> viewers and if you can share this to your timeline and tag your family and friends and hi also sa mga joiners, sa mga members ng ating Life Without Christ and Low Carb Feasting and Fasting Community. So usually, I like si, mom, si mommy nag um, um, nag-aagahan siya, nag-breakfast siya ng 6 in the morning. So that's very early because she wants to enjoy breakfast with daddy and uh, and with the family. However, by 2 o'clock ng hapon, tapos na siyang kumain. So actually, from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., yun yung kanyang eating window. So 6 a.m. until 12. So that's 6 hours plus 2 hours, 8 hours. So Yun yung tinatawag nating 8 and 6. Ah, 16, 8 pala. 16, 8. So, 16 hours of fasting and 8 hours of eating window. So, nasa sa inyo. So, generally, if na-hit nyo na yung inyong target at medyo payat na, wala ng allowance to lose more weight, then you can just stabilize at 12 hours fasting. Or maybe from time to time, you can do 14 hours of fasting. Pwede naman. For those na pwede pang mag-lose ng kakaunting more fats or are also incorporating exercise, so tumataas yung metabolism at gusto nila yung benefit ng exercise on a fasted state ay maximize then you can eat more and you can also just have your fasting at 16 hours. But for those na gustong mas mas mataas yung kanilang fasting because they want more healing, then, of course, you can extend up to 18 hours, 20 hours, depending sa inyong 
katawan. So, kailangan, hindi nyo ito kailangang persahin, but try to listen to your body. You will know when you are ready. So, just like now, very early akong kumain kagabi. So, maybe before before 7, maybe around 6, tapos na akong kumain and I can eat now. Pero when I try to look at the food, wala pa talaga akong gana. So, Kumuha lang ako ng black coffee. So, this is just black coffee. Kailang baka maano, no? Baka hindi nyo makita. So, this is just plain black coffee at 12.20. So, we are already at mga 18, going 19 hours of fasting na. And I'm still okay. So, kayo lang makakadictate niyan. And for those na, yun nga, yung kanilang uh, office hours, yung kanilang work sometimes ay nasa graveyard shift, nasa gabi, or irregular, yung kanilang schedule, Hindi alam kung kailan sila pwedeng matulog. So at least alam nyo na your last meal should be at least 4 hours before kayo matulog. That alone can already help a lot. And you can just eat all the foods that you want, especially low-carb foods, na nutrient-dense low-carb foods during your eating window. So yun yung ating top 2 best practice. Do eat real food and do circadian fasting. Now going to top 3 hit your daily target protein. So again, minimum na ata para sa mga naglo-low carb ay at least half kilo of of lean meat. So lean meat, wala pang kasamang taba. Yan. So lean meat, it can be from chicken. Itakot kayong kumain ng red meat. Although, I suggest wag kayong matakot kumain ng red meat. If kayo ay nagpa-CBC at medyo anemic kayo, mababa yung hemoglobin, mababa yung RBC, baka kinukulang kayo ng iron sa katawan. And that iron is not is not equal to the iron supplements na maiinom because ang iron na nasa red meat are organic heme irons na madaling a-absorb ng ating katawan. But the irons that are in supplements, sometimes hindi maganda yung kanilang absorption rate. Kaya kailangan kapag ininom ito, dapat empty stomach, dapat walang laman yung chan, and it can lead into stomach upset. Nagkakaroon ng, ng uh, discomfort kapag iniinom ito. So the natural kind of iron are the ones from red meat so I hope you are not afraid of red meat depending on your religion, maraming restrictions but marami namang options pa din. So kung bawal ang baboy, you can eat beef kung bawal yung beef, you can eat baboy kung bawal yung beef at baboy you can eat kambing, ba? So that's still red meat or kalabaw so those are still your options and of course, if hindi talaga then you can just have chicken and you can maybe eat chicken liver and organs ng chicken especially if it's organic chicken and of course, seafood Aha, eat some shells shellfishes, eat some fish crustaceans, if hindi bawal sa inyong religion, you can enjoy all those. So minimum is half kilo of raw. This is raw na, na weight ha, because about 100 grams of protein, ito yung gusto natin i-emphasize, which we want to emphasize more kasi noon, uh, there are confusions. Akala nila yung 100 grams na proteins ay 100 grams ng then na hilaw na kilo ng karne. No? 100 grams of proteins on average. This is on average kasi iba-iba yung protein value per food item but on average 100 grams of proteins is equal to about one 500 grams or kalahating kilo ng hilaw or raw weight ng karne okay so it depends on the kind of meat uh, the the heavier it is usually yung mas meaty mas mataas yung kanilang protein protein na component. Like in seafoods, yung isa sa pinakamataas na protein percentage would be shrimp. So yung shrimp and also sa chicken naman, so the lean ones, yung breast part is the, has the highest protein sa beef, yun din, yung, yung puro kanin. So yung pork belly, hindi mataas sa proteins yun. Okay? So imagine ang kailangan nating proteins, at least kalahating kilo ng lean meat. If you are about 70 to 80 kilogram weight, baka kailangan yun ng 3 4 kilo of lean meat. So this is already very very high compared to the usual na recommended because yung usual recommended kasi paired up with carbohydrates. Now, since we lower our carbohydrates to just 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrate in a day, so yung proteins natin can also be our source of energy. 
kasi yung ano yung uh, carbohydrates before tinatawag natin itong protein sparer so hindi niya gagamitin yung proteins na kinakain mo kasi yung glucose yung sugar sa carbohydrates yun yung primary source of energy mo but now with proteins as our primary fuel as our pri one of our resources of fuel ay pwede natin itong damihan at hindi ito makakalid into cancer there's no research na isolated high protein intake can lead into cancer or kidney problems. Those are misconceptions before at ngayon, maraming research na nagpapatunay na wala po yung katotohanan. But high protein intake with high carb intake with high inflammatory food intake, puro processed kinds of proteins, then that is a different story. But when we say high protein intake, at least half kilo of real food protein, okay? Sa mga nagtatanong, how about vegetarian, vegan, na getting their proteins in nut sources? So that is your option. But for me personally, I receive a lot of patients na nakakita natin na maraming side effect if you are getting your proteins from all of those. Ang pinaka-major side effects nun, the deposition of oxalates, yung mga anti-nutrients, it can lead into muscle wasting kasi nga kahit pa mataas yung kanilang protein level sa mga nuts and plant-based proteins but they are not readily absorbable kind of amino acids and proteins okay so amino acids eto yung parang glucose when it comes to carbohydrates so eto yung kanyang currency eto yung eto yung pinaka simplest form niya so building block of proteins are amino acids so Mataas man yung protein component ng mga plant-based proteins pero hindi ibig sabihin na ito ay compatible sa ating katawan so they are not readily available. So, uh, but the anti-nutrients there, the oxalates there, the phytonutrients there, sometimes it can lead into muscle pains, nagkakaroon ng aches and pains na akala mo'y inaarthritis ka na, yung iba nagkakaroon ng allergic na components, nangangate, still inflammatory even if it's low carb. So that's why when you target your proteins, try to get them from good kind of proteins, yung mas compatible sa ating katawan. Yung isang analogy dyan that you can think of would be kung kakain tayo ng mga pagkain, at least something that is similar with our physiology, at least similar sa ating pangangatawan. I know ayon, ayaw nyo ikumpara sa baka o sa baboy. But when it comes to structure, physiology, body component, at least mas malapit tayo sa baboy at sa baka as compared sa pananim o sa kangkong o sa kanin. Diba? Yung, yung ating we are live animals. And of course, our metabolism is best supplemented galing sa sources na somewhat similar sa atin. So live animals, the meat in there, the muscles are still the same muscles na nasa katawan natin. Yung taba na nandyan ay katulad din ng taba na nasa ating katawan. And our body will keep on producing them because that is our natural state. So... Plants are okay, but usually by nature, kumakain lang tayo ng plants for healing. They are our medicine. And if you are not sick, then you don't need to take medicine as well. So another topic for another time, tapusin muna natin yung ating top five best healthy practices for this year and ever. So number four, control fat. So as much as hindi tayo takot sa taba, pero... Anything too much ay hindi rin kailangan. So again, if kayo ay sinabi natin, di ba, yung minimum pro protein target natin, for example, nasa 100 grams of proteins equivalent to about equivalent to about 500 grams of of raw weight, ang taba naman ay kailangan natin kontrolin. Yung average na kailangan ng isang tao ay nasa 80 to 90 lamang or even be as low as 70 to 90 grams lamang. And contrary to our proteins, yung proteins marami pang component niyan na too big. So that's why yung hilaw na measurement ng 100 grams of proteins ay about 500 grams yan in raw weight. Nasa kalahating kilo. Ang kalahating kilong karne ay may laman na 100 grams of protein lamang. However, fats are actually very dense. Wala siyang kasamang tubig, walang kasamang masyadong extenders. Except sa skin, na collagen, and uh, some proteins. But generally, fats halos one is to one yung component niyan. 
So 90 grams, ha? so 90 grams divided by 15 is 6. Bakit divided by 15? Because yung isa sa pinaka-easy source ng fats natin would be the cooking oil. Pwedeng taba ng baboy, pwedeng butter, pwedeng coconut oil, which are all healthy. They are all good. Olive oil, they are all good and healthy and nice and yummy. However, one tablespoon of that is already 15 grams of fats. Parang one is to one yung ratio nito. So imagine, anim na tablespoon equivalent lamang ng butter, ng uh, mga heavy cream or all-purpose cream, oil, and mga taba ng baboy or taba ng baka, that's already 90 grams of fat. So that's why kailangan natin control yung fat. So if you can think of uh, meats, for example, if you visualize nyo, maybe per if yung isang pork chop, yung kanyang tab, yung kanyang lean meat, siguro yung isang ganyan ay nasa 100. So uh, 500 grams, so nasa limang pork chop without the fat. And yung taba, maybe nasa dalawa or tatlong taba lang, you are already hitting your fat target in a day. So because yung fat nga, yung kanyang weight is almost exclusively halos taba lamang. Maybe yung 15 grams of fat na taba ng baboy ay merong mga 10 grams. So it's still very, very high. So fats should be controlled then. And it will depend on your requirement. Merong mga certain conditions na in need of higher fats because yung kanilang protein requirement it should be less kasi kailangan babaan ito. Say for example, in CKD, CKD level 4, level 5, yung proteins nila, hindi na nila accommodated yung half kilo of lean meat. Baka nasa one-fourth kilo lang sila. So, kukulangin talaga sila ng energy. So, that's why for the energy requirement, it will be supplemented by fat. So, fats, hindi ibig sabihin unlimited. Hindi rin ibig sabihin wala. So, it should be controlled. It should be adjusted accordingly based on your nutritional needs and based on your goal for healing. So, based, for example, kung ikaw ay mataba pa, so maybe hindi nyo muna kailangan, kailangan kumain ng maraming taba. Kasi nga, yung gusto natin, yung taba sa ating katawan, yun yung magagamit as energy. Because so if mataas yung level of fats in your body and kumakain pa kayo ng taba, ay hindi na magagalaw yung taba na pwede pa sanang malusaw, pwede pa sanang magamit into energy because yung ginagamit ninyong energy ay yun lang yung kinakain yung taba. So, if gusto nyo mabigyan ng pagkakataon na yung taba sa katawan ay pwedeng mawala, pwedeng matunaw, it can be cleansed and replenished, then also you have to control your fat intake. If you are still overweight, then okay, magka merong kakaunting pagkain. So, a little calorie deficit. Although, sa simula, you can eat as much as you want until you are already adapted to low-carb way of eating kapag nasanay na yung katawan nyo na hindi na siya nakadepende sa glucose as source of energy. But eventually, Eventually, kailangan you have to lower down your intake in calories. I know hindi import hindi ganon ka importante ang calories as compared to how we think as uh, uh, na eto ay ganon ka important before. But still, calorie is still important, especially if you tend to overconsume it. Because if you still want to lose weight, if you want you still want to lower down your visceral fats in the body, so pwedeng pababain yung ating overall calorie intake para mabigyan ito ng pagkakataon na malusaw. And you can just increase your protein intake, do some exercises para yung extra protein that you are going to consume ay mako-convert into muscles. Okay? So, yun yung ating number four best practice to be healthy. So, control fats and especially if you consume fats, try to consume, uh, meron kayong consumption of omega-3 rich fats, hindi lang puro omega-6 rich fats, okay? Usually, omega-3 rich fats ay nanggaling sa mga organic na mga meat products. Yung mga organic meat products has higher omega-3 as compared to omega-6. So, yung mga not organic meat, although they are better, okay na lang din than eating high-carb foods, but we choose organic when it is available because it has higher omega-3 component. One hack that you can do is you take omega-3 supplement for every intake of food na hindi organic or sobrang taas sa omega-6 kasi dapat by nature 1 is to 1 yung intake natin of omega-3 to omega-6. So pag-usapan natin yan at another time. And lastly, we are now down to our 
fifth, best low carb and best healthy practices. Your doctor recommended. This is again your diet doctor, Dr. Josephine Grace Rohatan. At kung hindi pa kayo subscribe sa ating YouTube and sa ating Facebook channels, I hope you will do so as this can help our advocacy even more. So our top five would be consume carbs last. If hindi talaga mapigilan at nakakakain talaga ng carbs, ay pwede pa rin kumain ng carbs in all forms, especially complex carbohydrates, even if ito ay mga low-carb vegetables. Okay? Or for those na mahilig gumawa ng kanilang coconut bread, ng kanilang almond bread, yes, you can still have them, pero just after you consume your proteins and your fats and yun, last nyo na kainan yung carbs. Because the tendency nowadays would be kinakain nila yung carbs nung una and after nyan, especially sa mga mommies minsan, ay wala na silang ganang kumain ng proteins and fats. Or the worst part is they eat carbs and then they eat only fats without control. So it's high carb, high fat. So that is one of the dangerous stuff na gusto natin i-avoid. So kung kakain man ng carbohydrates, consume it last, whether it's low-carb carbohydrates and all the more if it's high carb na kind of carbohydrates. Mabusog muna, eating, consuming real foods, especially proteins and healthy fats, but consume the carbs last. So I think yun lang yung ating top five best low-carb practices in 2023. Also, the best healthy practices. Kung hindi man kayo naka-low-carb, you can still enjoy all the benefits just by doing all this. So eat real foods. Huwag muna magpadala sa mga nas nakikita ninyo sa commercials because yung totoong healthy na pagkain, hindi kailangan i-advertise yung nabibili sa palengke, yung, yung binibili sa meat shops, a vegetable shop, those are the real foods that you can do and learn more about circadian fasting. Search nyo sa ating YouTube and Facebook channel. Search nyo lang Dr. Rojo, Dr. Tan, circadian fasting to know more about it. And of course, always hit your daily target protein needs. Yung fats, hindi kailangan unlimited at hindi rin kailangan iwasan. It should be controlled appropriately. And lastly, consume carbs last kung ikaw ay kakain talaga. So, little announcement lang para sa marami pa rin na dadala ang meal mix nuts po ice cam. Hindi po ako nag-e-endorse niyan. There are uh, sellers that I trust where I buy my own nuts. Pero yung meal mix nuts po, yun ay ninanakaw lamang nila yung ating videos. Ninanakaw nila yung ating contents for them to use para maloko yung hindi masyadong nag nag uh, study ng ating real food list so stick to the safe list of JGC Rojo food list para po malaman niyo that eating meal mix nuts is really not necessary. So, scam po yan. So, wag magpapaloko. Merong iba, merong mga raisins at uh, yung iba, pero meron pa mga oats na alam natin are high carb and in our caution and danger list. And of course, we don't recommend. And for those who need some structured learning program, it's on sale now at www.lcfmasterclass.com so you can learn how to manage diabetes, hypertension for as little as 500 pesos lamang for for you and your family. So we recommend at least one family will enroll and then kayo na po ang magturo para sa inyong pamilya. And more info also at www.jgrtanmb.com. So maraming salamat everyone. Thank you so much. I'll see you all again on our next video. In, and if there are topics that you want to discuss, send it in our uh, Facebook pages and in our admin for those na kailangan ng appointments, our appointments are just by schedule only kasi busy po yung schedule natin going to places, Manila, and then Cebu, and many other engagements. So by appointment lang po yung atin, uh, you can message Cherise at 0917-993-1239 sa LCF Center naman in Ortigas if you wish to join our free masterclass. Kung kayo ay nahihirapan sa inyong computer, sa inyong phones on how to watch the very, very easy in our website you can just watch it for free sa ating LCF masterclass I think this coming Monday hypertension and diabetes yung free masterclass natin so you can contact Rochelle at 0977 
nine. So thank you so much, everyone. Hope to see you all in our masterclass groups and of course, free groups natin, low carb feasting and fasting community and life without Christ. Maraming salamat. I'll see you again next time. Remember to always stay low carb so that we all stay safe. Bye-bye.